So if you go into Google Classroom and you're wanting to practice, and you're wanting to practice some of these, this is where you go. Okay, so go into your class work tab, and here in worksheet packages and other materials, okay, you'll find all those things, okay? Um, so the lab report expectations, the day one package, your digital workbooks, and right here, key for naming worksheets and reaction worksheets with keys. All right, it's a PDF document. If you open it up, you got the questions and the answers. Okay, so you can check them as you go. Does it mean you need to do all of them? Not necessarily. Okay, if, you're, if you've done a bunch and you've gotten them all right, no, you don't need to do all of them. But if it's something you're struggling with, okay, then maybe you should do a few more. Okay, or come in and see me. Okay, I'm available for help like, well, every single day. I mean, obviously, there's flex time every single day, or night time, okay? Um, but there's also, okay, these other times when I'm around here, because I have no life, and this is where I live. Okay. So, yeah, you can come and see me if you've got questions, okay? Like the last few lunch hours, and the whole lunch hour, I've been giving help. It's great, okay? Come on in. There's no skin off my nose. You're not inconveniencing me. I have no life. All right. So, here is what I want to look at next. The next step past what we're doing right now is being able to predict the products of a chemical reaction. Now, you might be looking at that going, oh my god, there's like more. I'm already hurting. I think I already have tr having trouble doing what we're doing. It's actually not a whole lot different than what we're doing. It's mostly pattern recognition. Okay? So if I show you that reaction right there, that's only the reactant but they're both ionic compounds. What kind of reaction starts with two ionic compounds? Double replacement. Okay, so I can tell what kind of reaction I'm dealing with just from the first half of it. I don't need the whole thing to be able to tell. Okay, they all start differently. This one is double replacement because they're both ionic compounds. So as long as I can remember what's supposed to happen in a double replacement reaction, Figuring out what goes on the product side isn't that hard. Okay? In a double replacement reaction, all that happens is the metals switch places. Okay? So that means that on this side here, uh, chromium will end up with iodine and uh, beryllium will end up with bromine. Okay. Well, Okay, so now I've figured out who's partnered with who. Since they're both ionic compounds, what do I need to do with them? Drop and swap them. Okay, on this side, chromium was a plus three. Okay, and that's important because it's one of those ones that has more than one charge. Okay, so plus three minus one. Okay, and then this is a plus two and this is a minus one. All right, what's left to do? Balance it, yeah. All that's left to do is balance the reaction. Is there really anything new to this that we don't already know? Not really. Okay, we still have to identify the reaction type. We still have to be able to drop and swap compounds and balance reactions. So there's no new skill to being able to predict the products of a reaction. It's just you have to know the patterns a little better because okay? you don't see the whole thing. You only see the first half. Okay. Uh, so if I want to balance this, uh, I could start with bromine because it's a three. There's three bromines on this side, but only two over here. Lowest common multiple is six. So if I put a three there and a two there, my bromines are good. That gives me two chromiums. That gives me two chromiums and six iodines. And that fixes everything. Okay, so that's where we're headed. Hoping we can get to that near the end of the day today. Okay, but I'm kind of sensing a bit of apprehension okay, about the reaction stuff right now, and that's okay. All right, we can spend a little bit more time on that before we move on to this. Okay, so right now, 
what I would like you guys to do. Okay, we did we did seven, eight, and nine in here yesterday. So I would like you guys to try, let's say five and six. Five and six right now. Okay, so remember, first thing you want to do, write write out the reaction in formula form. Drop and swap if necessary. Use prefixes when it's not. Okay, and then uh, identify the type and balance. Okay. So we got nitrogen trihydride. So we got a molecular compound. Right. So we got N H three. Okay. Reacts with oxygen. What does oxygen look like when it's by itself? Oops. Right. Okay. It's one of those special ones. You can't forget those. Okay. Produces nitrogen and dihydrogen monoxide. So what does nitrogen look like when it's by itself? Mm -hmm. and what's dihydrogen monoxide? Yeah. Water. H2O. Uh, okay. So what kind of reaction is that? Yeah, it's kind of a single replacement, although this is a molecular compound, but that would be the closest one for sure, yeah, because we got a compound reacting with an element, producing a different element, different compound. Okay. Um, all right, we got to balance this. Okay, so what should I start with? Yeah, I'd say that we could probably start with hydrogen. Okay, that's our best bet here. All right, there's three on this side, two on that side. Lowest common multiple? is six, but I can see a problem right now. If I put a two here, I'm going to have to put what here? A three. a three, that's gonna give me three oxygens and I'm not gonna be able to make this work, okay? Because this number won't be big enough. So sometimes that happens and that's okay. And when it happens, it's okay. Um, we're just going to pick a different one to start with. Okay. What would be my next logical one to start with? Okay, we could go to 12. Um, well, let's see how that goes. So let's, let's try 12. So I'm going to put a 4 here. Okay? Um, and then I'm going to come over here and put a 6 here. Everybody all right with that? Okay, so now I've got 12 hydrogens on both sides. When I put this 4 here, how many nitrogen does it give me? 4. Okay, so what needs to go here? Mm -hmm. All right, now i got to look at my oxygens. i got 6 over here, so what needs to go here? 3. Mm -hmm. Seems to work. Okay. I can't reduce those down any further, so that's the way it'll stay. Right. That's a tricky balance, for sure. How many people have done number six? Okay, let's have a look at six then. So, we got carbon. That's what carbon looks like. Um, which type was number five? We said it was kind of a single replacement, not a true single replacement. All right, so carbon looks like this when it's by itself, and it reacts with oxygen comes as O2 to produce carbon dioxide. Well, that was easy. Do I have to balance anything? No. It's already balanced. Okay, um, what kind of reaction is it? Synthesis, yeah. Okay, um, so like I said, it's just gonna take some practice. We've gone through now a couple of worksheets, basically. Okay, We've kind of just been picking away at them, but the first, um, the first worksheet, for sure, both sides were done. Okay. Uh, but we haven't gotten to the one about balancing, okay, which is just this one. And all it has is you identify the type and you balance, but that's it. You don't actually have to write it out. So, I mean, you can do that one if you you know, want some practice with your balancing. But the next thing we're moving on to, guys, is this, predicting the products of a chemical reaction. Okay, it's kind of our natural next step here, being able to identify what kind of reaction is happening, and then from the pattern, predict the results. Okay, that's where we're going next. All right, questions on any of that? All right, we won't have another lab until we get back. Right, we just, tomorrow's a short class, so we don't have time for our reactions lab, but it'll probably be either the Monday or the Tuesday when we come back. We'll be doing another lab on chemical reactions. So tomorrow, 
We're going to go over how to predict the products. Okay. All right. We'll call it there.